In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. Begin by reading Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 to 22, then Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. In Luke you'll find there's a man who comes to the Lord, and he asks him what he must do to inherit eternal life. Notice he says, quite rightly, do. And the Lord actually then explains to him in doing terms, and he tells him the story of the Good Samaritan. The man who was the enemy of the man who had been attacked was the only one to help him, and that's the one who turned out to be the man's neighbour. The Lord said, go and do likewise. Now, in Ephesians chapter 2, we find something else that's very interesting, and that is that St. Paul is talking about a wall. We think that it's the wall that is in the temple. What, what it did, it separated people who are Jewish from people who are not Jewish. And St. Paul says, there's a long preamble to this actually, it'd be well worthwhile you reading the whole of Ephesians, that explains it really well. St. Paul is saying, the Lord has broken down that wall of separation. He also calls it the wall of enmity, of being an enemy with somebody else. He's broken it down in his own body. The idea was that Jews were on side, Gentiles on the other side. Now the wall has disappeared, everybody becomes one people. Go back to the Good Samaritan, you can see how that reflects on that idea. How does this actually affect us? Well, in our society, we know that there are people who are much less equal than others. There are people who are very poor and people who are very rich. There are people of upper, upper classes and people of lower classes. There are people who have lots of opportunities, people who are born with no opportunities at all. There are people who suffer racism, the people who suffer oppression, the people who become oppressors, the people who have wonderful jobs and plenty of respect, and the other people who have no respect at all, even though they might work very hard. The Lord comes along to break down the barriers between people like those, smash them down, so that each person, each one, is a brother or a sister of the other one. When we think about the terrible things that have been happening in the Middle East, we think about what's happening in Iraq on a daily basis, in Syria every day, what's been happening in Lebanon, in Beirut particularly recently, what happens in Afghanistan all the time, the dreadful things that happen in parts of Central and Southern America, and what has happened in France just the other day. We can see that there are ghastly, awful, wicked things that are happening to people who are entirely innocent, going about their everyday business, whether they're Afghans or whether they're Parisians, whether they're from Beirut or whether they're from Damascus, whether they're from Haiti or whether they're from East Africa. In other parts, there are people so wealthy that they throw away most of the food they buy. And in other parts, the people so poor that they feed their children grass. The Lord came to break down those barriers. You see, if you carry on reading in Ephesians, it talks about us, all of us, being God's temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Each one of us, as it were, part of that construction bricks and beams and windows, doorways, pillars and so on, each one of them fitting snugly against the next, pressed up against the next and all of it making this one temple, just one temple. Not one temple for wealthy people, one for poor, one for people who have peace and others who live amongst war. One people, one nation, one type of human being, under God. All of us one in Christ. Now I hope you can see what that means for each of us. You see, all of us, by and large, 
are walking past the man who's been battered half to death. Whether you're a priest like me, whether you are somebody trained in religion like the Levite, or maybe you're a Samaritan, somebody totally foreign to the religion. Perhaps it's the other way round. The person you see battered and dying is somebody quite different from you. He's the Samaritan. He or she is the one that you feel quite frightened of. And you come to them because for you, you are the Samaritan. For him rather, you are the Samaritan. So keep that in mind. The Lord built only one temple. All of us are part of that temple. He expects each of us to take note of the person at the side of the road, battered and bleeding. Notice that the Samaritan had the medicines on him that he poured into the wounds. He bound up his wounds, he poured medicine into them. So we have to be ourselves prepared constantly to find the person who's damaged. Not as something that's a once-off thing, but constantly understand how do you do it? we said this before. Each of us has resources. It might be writing letters, it might be praying, it might be donating money, it might be going on a protest march, it might be actually stooping down in the road to help somebody who's in drunken stupor. It might be, as happens in this city, the people called street pastors who go out on Fridays and Saturdays and look after those people who have even lost their shoes, they're so drunk. <laughs> they are the ones who are vulnerable to being beaten, raped, pillaged, and the Samaritans go out and look after them. Or you might be listening to those who are homeless and doing something about it, joining a group or society that actually does bind up the wounded. So read these very carefully. Read them very carefully. They strike right at the very centre of Christianity. And one other thing. With what has been going on in the world recently, with the terrible car bombs, with the dreadful people killing others with Kalashnikovs, with those who blow themselves up wanting to kill others, our natural response is to take revenge. Remember that we are here to love, to pray and to forgive. If anybody is going to take vengeance, that vengeance comes from the Lord. Just recently a young man that we've nicknamed Jihadi John has probably been killed. The Lord told us to pray for our enemies. Remember that poor, young, misguided man in your prayers. And also pray for me. God bless you. Amen.